Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to integrate 1 over x to a third power plus x. And I'll show you guys two ways to do it. The first way is the traditional partial fraction because we have a rational function here, and we see that we can actually factor the denominator, right? So that's a big hint. We should use the partial fraction. And the other way, it's not so obvious, but it's really cool, so just wait for it. Anyway, so right here we see we have x to a third power plus x. We know we can factor on x, so we can just go ahead and do that. So we will have x times x squared plus 1. And this is done. This is not factorable, so it's all done. And now, here is the partial fraction part. And as I said, I will do it seriously the traditional way, the traditional partial fraction. I'm not taking any shortcut. I'm not doing the Kafka method, even though I could for some part, but let me not do that. Anyway, I will write down 1 over x times x squared plus 1 like this. And then you know, because the bottom here, we have two factors, so that means we can break this into two fractions. The first one is going to be something over x. And the other one is going to be something over x squared plus 1, right? And now, you have to be careful on the kind of the things that you have to put down on the top. This right here is x to the first power. Remember, the top, when you set up, it has to be 1 degree less than the bottom. And it has to be exactly 1 degree less than the bottom. This is linear. On the top, it has to be a constant, right? No x. And right here, when you have x squared plus 1, you have to set up a linear term right here. Namely, I will put down bx plus c. We used a already, so that's why, right? So this is the general setup. If you set up incorrectly, of course, you will not get it right. Anyway, if you know how to do a cover up method, you know you can use a cover up method to get a, and that's going to be quick. But here is the traditional way, all right? Traditional way is we will multiply the entire rational equation by the lowest common denominator, namely this and that. So let's do that real quick, right? x times x squared plus 1. And now, this times this is, you know, they cancel out, so we just have 1. And that's equal to, when you have a over x times that, the x cancel out. So we'll have a times this factor only, which is x squared plus 1, right? And then we add this times that, the x Square plus 1 cancel out, so we will have bx plus c, and be sure you put this in your parentheses, times this x. So now that's what we have. And then what we do is, we just multiply this out and combine like terms on the right-hand side. And now, on the left-hand side, 1, and on the right-hand side, combine like terms. Here is ax squared. Here is bx squared. So I'm going to put down this as a plus b, and then times x squared. And here is the cx. That's the only term that has the x, right? So we'll just write down plus cx. And lastly, we have this plus a, okay, by itself, like that. Okay, we are ready to set up some system of equations. And this is you know, hopefully not that bad. First of all, let's look at the right-hand side. This, a plus b. It's the coefficient of x squared. But if you look at the left-hand side, what's the coefficient of x squared on the left-hand side? It should be 0, because it has no x squared, right? So it's 0 x squared. So in another word, we must have a plus b equal to 0. That's the first condition, OK? Well, let's look at the other one. This right here is the coefficient of x. But on the left-hand side, What's the coefficient of x? Once again, 0, because we don't have any. So we know right away, c has to be 0. Okay, this is done. At the end, a has to be what? This right here is the constant. It doesn't have any x. This right here has to be this constant, namely 1, isn't it? So we see that a is equal to 1. Aha! We have three conditions. We got a already. We got c already. How can we find b? We know a is 1, so 1 plus b equal to 0. Of course, we can say b is equal to negative 1, all right? And now we can come here. a is 1, and b is negative 1, and c is equal to 0. And we are in business now because we can finish up our integration, all right? Therefore, this is going to be integral. 
I will put down this first fraction, namely 1 over x, right? 1 over x. And the second fraction is going to be negative 1 times x. So it's technically saying minus, right? Because we have the negative 1. So let me emphasize that. We have the negative 1 x, like that, okay? And then since c is 0, so this doesn't matter. And we're really lucky. It's just negative 1 x over x squared plus 1 dx, like that, right? And you can put parentheses. You don't need to, in my opinion. And let me just do this for you guys. I will break this apart into two little integrals. The first one is the integral of 1 over x dx. And then we minus the other integral, x over x squared plus 1. And I'll close that. This right here is natural log of absolute value of x. And then what's this? We have an x on the top, and on the bottom is x squared plus 1. The derivative of the bottom is what? 2x, right? So you know that x and that x will cancel. And you can just do the u sub in your head, and we can write it out. But anyway, this is going to be 1 half ln, the denominator, which is x squared plus 1 x squared plus 1, it's always positive, so we can use the parentheses right here, all right? And this is, this is that, and of course we bring down the minus, and we're done. So this right here, we can put down plus c. This right here is the answer, okay? Just like that. And now, as I said, this is just the first way, the traditional partial fraction. Right here, I will show you another way to do it. Sometimes it would be helpful if we can think. Well, I should say rethink factoring, all right? So let me put this down right here. Integral 1 over x to a third power plus x dx. Earlier, when I factor out the denominator, we factor out an x because this is x to a third power, this is x to a first power. We factor out the smallest exponent, the x. Is it possible for me to factor out the biggest exponent, namely x to a third power? Can't do that. Sure, why not? Just do it carefully, right? So when I do that, I will factor out x to a third power, okay? And right here, I will have a 1 left. Then that's plus. Originally, this was x to a first power, but I took 3 out. So how many do I have left? It's going to be x to the negative 2, because you owe me 2, right? 1 minus 3 is negative 2, just like that. And if you don't believe me, just multiply inside. x to the third power times 1 is x to the third power. x to the third power times x to the negative 2 power. 3 plus negative 2 is positive 1. This is the factoring, right? And you may be wondering, like, why did I do that? How can I do partial fraction like this? I am not going to do partial fraction at all. Look at this right here is x to the third power, all right? And you know partial fraction is not going to work based on this because we'll have a negative exponent here, right? Since we are working with negative exponent here, why don't I look at x to the third power as a negative exponent as well? If you want to do that, we will have the integral. This x to the third power, it was on the denominator. I can take it to the top. It becomes x to the negative 3 power, yeah? And then over the bottom is just this now, 1 plus x to the negative 2. And that's close, that which is the dx. Can we do this? Well, look at the denominator. If you differentiate that, this is going to be 0. The derivative of x to the negative 2 is going to be negative 2 times x to the negative 3. And we have the x to the negative 3 on the top, isn't it? So for this one, just to make it more epic, I will show you guys the u substitution by writing it out, all right? So I'm not going to make you guys to do the u sub in your head and like that one, all right? Right here, I will let u equal the bottom 1 plus x squared. Well, 1 plus x to the negative 2 power. And then you see du is going to be that 0. And then differentiate that. Bring that to the front. That's negative 2. Minus 1. So you have x to the negative 3 like that. And we have the dx. And let's isolate the dx on both. Let's isolate the dx. So I will divide this on both sides. In another word, dx equal du over negative 2 times x to the negative 3 power. Isn't it? 
And now, let me just continue right here. Hopefully, don't mind, all right? Because I run out of space. Anyway, this right here is an integral. And on the top, we have the x to the negative 3 power over the bottom is just my u. And then dx is that, which is du over negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. And of course, you see that this and that cancel out. And now we will have what? I will put this down in the front. We have the 1 over negative 2. So I'll put a negative right here, like this. And all in all, we're just integrating 1 over u du. Well, this is just negative 1 half. This is just ln absolute value, u is what? That, right? So 1 plus x to the negative 2, just like this. And of course, you notice this is pretty much 1 over x squared, which is always positive. And if you add 1 to that, it's also always positive. So you don't need this absolute value. You could have just put down a parenthesis like that. And in this case, you are also done as well. All right? And now, I know some of you guys may be wondering, is this the same as that? Why don't you guys tell me, uh, do some algebra on your own to figure out if that is the same as this or not?